I just want us to look. We look at the virus amongst us, amen? Well, let's, let's just talk about the elephant in the room for a moment because that's what everybody talks about out there today. No matter where you go, no matter what you're doing, it's the virus this, it's the virus that, it's the dead over here, it's this, that, there, it's that. But let, let's look at what the scriptures are saying to us today. Why are we looking, hello, why are we looking for the living among the dead? Why are we going to the dead places trying to find something that is alive and well? I'm here to tell you that in verse 2, when they went to the stone, that those folks, they went that day, the disciples and Mary and all them, they went to look upon a, a dead person laying in the grave. They went there looking to examine him. They went there to, to bring something to him. But I'm here to tell you today that we need to look that we serve a risen Savior. We serve a God. God among all God. We serve a living God. He's not dead. He's not hanging on a cross anywhere. He's not shopping at Walmart right now, but he's living in, in our hearts and our soul. He's alive and he is well, church. We need to recognize and identify that we serve a living God, that he alone is alive and well. And because he's alive, we're alive today. Amen? That when we look into the scriptures and we see in verse 2, it says that they found the stone rolled away from the sculptures. I want us to look at that. And God spoke into my heart this week and he says that that stone being rolled away is a representation of our sins being forgiven from us. It's a representation of, of our sins leaving from our old sinful body and being cast away as far as the east is from the west. Amen. That's, I want you to look at those scriptures a little different today and say, God, I need to have that stony heart of mine. I need to have it rolled back to where you can enter into the places that, God, I have I, I made a monument of or I wrapped it up and I kept it there. I need you to roll that stony heart of mine, oh God, and look inside there and examine and bring out that old stuff and cast it away today. I need you, oh God, to examine me today because this is the day that you have made and I want to rejoice and be glad in it. And I find it very interesting. You see that when in verse 3 it says, And they entered in and they found not the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you, I can just imagine those uh, disciples and, and Mary and them, whenever they walked up there to that tomb and they seen it roll back, the first thing they thought of probably was, is, My goodness, somebody that done come and took our Savior. Somebody done come and got him. Amen. That's why the, uh, the uh, Egyptians there, that's why Pharaoh and them, that's why all those people came against the Israelites because they knew that the Savior was coming, that there was something about to take place in their life somewhere along the way and they wanted to stop all of that. That's why they went in there and they put the guards over the tomb. Amen. That's why they put them there is because they was afraid that the disciples was going to come and take them. But I'm here to tell you nobody has to take anybody. Hello. Because he rolled that stone away himself. He knew that he had to show them because just by telling them, they would not believe. That's why they went there. They did not believe. Hello. Mm -hmm. If they had to believe that he said, that he said, that he said, that you may tear down this temple, you may destroy this body, but in three days I'm going to rise again. If they truly believed that that's what he was going to do, they never would have walked down there. They would have stood there by the side and said, okay, Lord, have your way, because I believe today that no matter what happens, that you are not in there. You're alive and you are well. You are alive and you're well. That's where we fall short in our walk today. That's where we fall short in our lives because we put more emphasis on the things around us and the things that surround us than we do His Word. That's right. Mm. You see, they found out His body because, you see, we should be seeking life and not death. Too many times you see in our society, unless it's doom and gloom, 
nobody wants to talk about. And I'm going to have my little harp here just for a second. That's all the news cares about. Mm -hmm. That's all they care about is the doom and the gloom. They want to post facts about this, that, and the other. But what about the life? What about the goodness of God? What about the goodness that He's doing? They want to share all the, the doom and gloom and, and all the bad things because they think that's what it takes for society to be interested. But society should be interested in life because Jesus said that I come to give you life and life more abundant. I didn't come to bring you death. I died so you didn't have to die. Hello? I came and sacrificed my life so you didn't have to. You see, we're too busy seeking the death of things than the life that is given to us. Oh my, how much more would our lives be fulfilled if we continue to seek this, the everlasting life with our Lord and Savior? Oh, but you don't understand the things that I have to deal with. You don't understand the, understand the things I have to go through. Nobody don't. But I know a God who does. Mm -hmm. A God who cares, who loves. You may not see it right now because the enemy is trying to tell you that if he was a true God, why would he let this happen? Mm -hmm. But ask yourself right now, am I not alive? Am I not here right now to where I can say, God, help me. God, help me through this time. God, help me in, in the ways that only you can. That you alone bring life. You see, when they came there to that tomb that day, they looked over there and they saw the two men and they were afraid. I'm going to put it in Rick's terms for just a moment. <laughs> I know some of you are going, oh my, <laughs> here it is. <laughs> But just imagine these folks walking up to a tomb that was supposed to be sealed. And yet they saw the stone rolled back. And yet they entered into it just to find they was looking for someone dead. But all they saw was the linen clothing that they wrapped Jesus with. Lay there. And then when they walked outside and they saw the two men, then they became afraid. Oh my. And the, and the angels that were there says, Be not afraid. Why seek ye the living among the dead? Mm hmm. Mm. Why do we put so much emphasis on something dead than alive? To me, that's about like going out there and trying and putting gas in a car that has no motor, that has no wheels, and is sitting on concrete blocks. When I can go right beside it, and put it in a vehicle that has a motor and it has tires and it has the capability of running. Why are we putting it in deadful things when we can be putting it in lifeful things? When we take our faith that we have right now and we say, God, I don't like what's going on in our society, but I'm going to trust you because you, God, have given this ability to me. You have shown me, oh God, that you are God, and I love you beyond all things. So my hope, my faith, and my trust is in you. 
ten year ago. And I, and I was looking into these scriptures, and uh, I did not give these to my wife this morning, but here's another one for you. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and it says this, starting with verse 1, it says, Moreover, brother, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which ye also have received, and wherein you stand, by which also ye are saved, if you kept in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, <clears throat> and that he was buried and that he rose again and the third day according to the Scriptures. You see, don't take my word for it. Take God's word for it. The Scriptures. He says... That no matter what comes or goes, this body that I have has to be delivered and it has to be beaten. It has to be hung on a cross so that your sins might be forgiven. But here's the bonus of it. That whenever he's placed into a ground that the enemy says that it's final, that it's over, that's it, there's nothing left. He said, I'm going to show you that death does not even cover. Death cannot even have it. Death cannot even go near it. That my body shall rise again. And because of my body being rose again, you which believe in me, which you stand with me, shall not have the problem of worrying about death ever again. Because you shall live with me forever. Amen, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Because of what I've done, you're able to do it too. Because of what I've overcame, you can overcome too. You see, we worry so much about here and now, but what about the everlasting part of our life? Yeah. What about when we stand before God what is he going to say? I know you not. Depart from me. I know we stand at times and says, oh, I believe. I know we stand there and says, I know there's a God. But do we truly believe and accept him as our personal Savior? Do we really stand and believe that no matter what comes or goes, we have an eternity life with Christ Jesus. Hmm. I want us to go to verse 8. And this is what really struck my spirit this week. And it says, And they remembered his words. They did not remember my words. They did not remember your words. They did not remember the disciples' words. They didn't remember all the other people's words. But they remember Jesus' words. And he said to them, even in the Passover, even when they was walking along, even whenever Peter cut off the ear, hello? Even whenever Peter denied him, the word was still there. And it says that my body shall be delivered unto them, and it shall be crucified. But yea, I say unto thee, on the third day I shall arise. Death has no victory. Substance abuse has no victory. Anxiety, depression, disease, this virus has no victory over the name of Jesus Christ. Right, we 
need to remember his word. The comforting word that says no matter what comes or what goes, he has gone to prepare a home for us. Hmm. If I believe, the word teaches me that if I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart, then I am saved. But just being saved is not good enough. Hello? Mm -hmm. We have to live out these scriptures. That means we're going to have pain and sorrow. That means we're going to have heartbreak. That means we're going to have death around us. That means we're going to go through some troubles and trials. But I also remember that I am a conqueror through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. That means that as long as I remember, hello, verse 8, as long as I remember his word that says no matter what comes or goes, no matter how high and no matter how low, it doesn't matter, I am with you always. And I want you to understand today that no matter what comes or goes in your life, God is still with you. And we still need to remember his word that says that he is with us forever. No matter what happens, he is with us. We can live with him forever. I remember when I was growing up, I always used to freak out a little bit. Whenever we would go to some services and we'd hear those hellfire and brimstone services. And well, there were some that I just knew, oh Lord, if you came back right now, you'd set me on fire. <laughs> Hello? I remember some of those services where I would grip the, the pew so tight that my knuckles would turn just a glossy white almost, it seemed like. But I'm here to tell you, God's not here to scare us. God's not here to punish us. He's here to love us. That's, right. That's why he wants us to remember his word. The word that says that he's risen from the grave. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding for you and I right now. He sees the things we go through. But I'm here to tell you, this old life down here, it's not easy. But when we take off this mortality and put on immortality, uh, oh hallelujah, there ain't no grave that can hold this body down. There, there ain't no disease that can hold this body down. There ain't a cancer out there that can hold this body down. There ain't no sickness out there. There's no viruses. There's no fire. There's no nothing that can hold this body down. Whenever I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, I put on that immortality of this life saying I don't want no more part of this old flesh. I put this flesh under subjection and say you're going to line up with the spirit man today because I got to have this in order to function. I got to have this in order to be successful in this life to serve my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What about you today? I know... We, we focus on one time a year. We shouldn't. We should focus on every day being that day. We're so worried about society not functioning again. We're so worried about the church doors not opening again. I ain't worried about the church doors not opening again. I'm worried about if he comes right now, where would you go? I'm worried about tomorrow. When society goes chaotic again or for whatever reason, what about tomorrow? Are you ready to meet Jesus face to face? Are you ready to stand before God 
and give an account? Are we ready that if that trumpet should sound right now, are we ready to have that meeting in the air? I remember we used to sing that old song, There's a Meeting in the Air. And I used to love that song, but then I get thinking about it. Oh, well, Lord, I'm, I'm too young. Just give me a few more years. Well, he gave me a few more years, but I wasted most of them doing what? My own thing. The way I wanted to do it. The way I thought it should be done. But because of his love, his mercy, his grace, because of his word, he continued to pursue me. He continued to love me. I know that the time is drawing closer. It's drawing closer ever, every day. Every second of the day. People's more worried about a tornado than they are in the second coming of our Lord and Savior. They're more worried about the market crashing than they are about the coming of our Savior. They're more worried about what's going to take place next week at work or wherever than they are in the second coming of our Lord and Savior. God gave us this moment today, folks. He gave us this moment right here and right now. To take away all the distractions. To take away all the buying and unnecessary stuff that we do. For us to stay focused just for a moment. And remember His Word. And His Word is this. That God sent His Son into this world, not to condemn it, but through Him, it might be saved. That's right. If we confess with our mouth and we believe in our hearts, then we are on the path. Then we can be overcomers through Christ Jesus, which strengthens us. This morning, I, I, re I mentioned to us about during our communion. And I hope you had time to go and get yours. Or, like I said, you could use water and a, and a cracker, or you could use water and a chip, whatever. It, it's not about that. It's about to remember. Verse 8. And they remember his words. Whenever he was sitting there around that table, or just sitting here on the floor, or wherever it was he was at that night, for that last supper. They remembered his words then. They remembered what was going to have to take place. Hmm. So this morning, before we take communion, I want you to be able to examine your life right now. I want you to be able to take this Communion worthy. I'm going to have someone to come if they don't mind and place some little something other for us here. Hallelujah. I want them to be able to take communion worthy here. So, as Shawnee's coming for just a second, I want you to look into your life and say, Father, you know where you stand. You know what you've been going through. God's always been faithful to you. But maybe, like the rest of us, you ain't always been faithful to Him. Maybe there are some things in your life that you need to get rid of. Or maybe you're just not sure. You're just not sure if you are saved or not. That's okay. Because now you have an opportunity to know. 
I don't want you not to know. I need you to know. Father, examine us, O Lord. Examine our hearts today, O God. Lord, just as the scriptures quoted here, the stone was rolled away. So, Lord, whatever stone we have covering our heart today, roll it back, Lord. Roll it back right now, Father. Let every sin, let every imperfection, let it be shown right now. Let it be seen right now of us, oh God. Father, forgive us of our sins. Father, the ones that we know we commit, the ones that we know we do willingly, yet also, Lord, forgive us of the ones that we may not know we did. How we may have offended somebody or whatever it was, oh God. We need a cleansing right now, Father. We need this heart of ours. That stone rolled back, that tomb is right there. We need that tomb empty. We need it empty, oh God, so you can fill it with your love, with your resurrection power, oh God. You can feel it this morning. With that love and that mercy, that awesome grace that you give, God. So this morning, God, we ask this, Lord. We ask this this morning, God, that you fill us, God, as you have forgiven us of our sins.
earth because I love you. Because I want you to be with me forever. Because there's no other sacrifice, there's no other blood that can do what mine will do. There's nothing else that can cover the sins that you will have except my blood. Oh God. He said, take this cup. Drink of it. It's a representation of my blood that which should be spilled upon Calvary for the remission of all sins. Not some, not part, but all.
We thank you, God. There ain't no grave that can hold us down. There ain't no sickness. There ain't no diseases that can destroy what you have done for us. And for that, God, we say thank you. We love you and we praise you, O oh Lord, for giving us bread this day to praise you. You are mighty. You are good, Lord. And I ask this in Jesus' name right now. And I'm going to ask Shawnee just to sing just a little bit of this as we as we close out this service today. I pray that you don't close your ears and your heart to the Word. But I pray today that you let that His presence just guide you and direct you. That you let his presence go before you today. Let it be the way maker. Let it be the comforter. Let it be the peace. Let it be the joy. I miss hanging out with everybody. But what I would hate most of all is not to see you in heaven. If I don't see you down here, that's okay. Let me see you there. Let me know you there. 